Hi, Kevin from The Geek Reviews. Um, what do you think of this episode? Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin, I am a geek, you're watching Kevin the Geek. It is Ted Lasso, Series 1, Episode 8, The Diamond Dogs. Love this episode, let's get on and talk about the review. Remember, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and make sure you smash a like on that like button. I want to get things going, and I'll tell you what, right now, I'm on the road to 100 subscribers, and I really, really appreciate it if you help me out to get there. So, The Diamond Dogs. What I love about this episode is that it's all about communication. And you have so many different pairings of people that have different ways of communicating and, you know, should they communicate more? Should they communicate less? Let's start with Ted and Rebecca. Now, similarly to last time, both of these have such a juxtaposition to each other that they're kind of so different to each other. And it even starts off with the aftermath of the previous night. So, of course, Ted slept with Rebecca's friend Sassy, and Rebecca slept with a random waiter. Now, when they wake up after the activities of the night before, both couples are still in the hotel rooms. Now, Rebecca, she initially just tries to sneak out, but then thinks, what am I doing? This is my hotel room. Oi, you, out. And doesn't really do anything. Whereas Ted, he's quite respectful. You know, he, he wakes up, you know, much earlier. And he doesn't wake Sassy. He just goes and gets himself some breakfast, gets himself coffee. And he gets a late checkout. And then Sassy wakes up. They have a little bit of a conversation. He tells her. And they have a nice little bit of dynamic. And then Ted leaves. So two one-night stands, but very different communications with the respective partners after the fact. Now, Ted, uncharacteristically, as Coach Beard points out, he doesn't actually say a lot to anybody else after that. And I find that interesting because Ted is always such a talkative person. He's always so willing to communicate, but he's kind of withdrawn into himself and... I love the fact that Coach Beer just straight up notices it. I mean, to be fair, I think anyone would. But you've seen Ted and you know how much he talks and rambles on. Kind of like myself in a little bit. But, you know, Coach Beard really picks up on it. And that shows they've got a lovely friendship and, and dynamic. They just know each other so well. And he knows him so well because after Ted says, look, I'm going to tell you what's happened. You never want to ask me again. I never want to discuss it ever again. And he says that he slept with Sassy. Coach Beard immediately says, do you want to talk about it? Because he knows that Ted needs to talk about it. And Ted immediately says, yeah, I want to talk about it. So this, of course, leads on to Ted having a bit of a group therapy session, if you like, with his friends. With Coach Beard, with Nate, and Higgins. And I love that Higgins is in there, because... So far, Higgins has just been a little bit on the outside, and this is, from this episode on, this is where you see Higgins really start to integrate a lot more. And I'm down for that. I love Higgins as a character. I'm down for more Higgins. So Ted's really beating himself up about the previous night. That he's bit Nate's head off. He's had all these problems with, with uh, the divorce papers and Michelle and, and the nervous breakdown, the panic attack. And then he goes and has a one night stand and he can't just kind of shrug it off. What I like with the depiction of the guys in that group is it's a very guy response. Where Coach Beard, basically at the end of them all talking and everything, Coach Beard just says, He's right. Time to get you some of these. What, scissors? Yeah, to cut yourself some slack. Wow. Y'all stuck the landing on that. That was nice. Because that's the thing, you know, men aren't good at communicating. I consider myself a slight exception to that, but most guys, you know, there's this sort of expectation to be really manly, you, you know, and, and just be really strong. And 
sometimes you're going to have times that you're not always necessarily the, the best version of yourself and you need to open up and be a little bit more emotional. So I like the fact that they've gone down the route of being, you know, just man up, be a man, just get over it. Because that really shows. That's what it's really like when guys talk together. Now, Roy and Keeley, they've obviously been brewing for a number of episodes. They had their first kiss in the last episode. And now Keely really wants to kind of take things further. She kind of wants to understand because, of course, they kiss. But then Roy walked away. She was expecting that they were going to sleep together. And Roy is a very stereotypical man. He doesn't open up. He is honest. You know, he talks to Keely and says, yeah, I'm busy. So I, I can't do anything. But Keely wants to know more. And if Roy had communicated more, he would have prevented the whole situation where Keely gets confused. She ends up sleeping with Jamie, who comes back into the picture. And then Roy gives himself a load of heartache. They, they have to kind of work themselves out. And if Roy had only communicated that a little bit better, they could have avoided all that. But the way that they managed to resolve it throughout the episode, I really like what they're doing there. You know, it's a real nice dynamic that, again, they could have just blown off that they kind of have a bicker and then they go off and they never do anything together again. Here they actually do make an effort to actually learn and develop and grow. And it results in this wonderful scene that I still laugh my heart out every time I watch it with the whole mock press conference thing where Keely's going, oh yeah, Keely Jones, the independent woman, so da 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 da, all that stuff, every little bit and her running around there, it just keeps making me laugh every time I watch it. Now someone else who needs to communicate more is Rupert and Rebecca. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily communicate more, they need to communicate better. And this really shows in this one, Rupert is still being an absolute jerk and trying to rub everything in Rebecca's face at every chance he's got. It's not only now such a fact that he's dating new Rebecca, he's now engaged to this other Rebecca as well. And then to top it off, the deals of their divorce meant that Rupert couldn't own any share of the football. And so what does he do? He finds a loophole. He gets Bex to buy a small percentage stake in the club by giving her the money. So it is in effect Rupert owning the club just in Bex's name. And he uses it to rub it in her face so that he can go to the match every week, sit in a box and continuously torment Rebecca. He's an absolute arsehole. And I said it before in the episode with the party, Ted notices these things. What is going on? And he wants to try and put him in his place because he's being underestimated. So they have this little dance competition where they have a wager. Where Rupert, if he wins, is going to name the starting lineup for the last two games of the season. Or if Ted wins, Rupert cannot go in the owner's box. And first of all, I love the fact that they point out that Ted is left-handed because I am a lefty myself. But they make this whole thing about that Ted is, is like, oh, I'm not very good at dance, which entices Rupert to fall into the trap of making this bet. And that sums Rupert up. He's so egotistical. He thinks he's better than everyone else. And he's, he wanted to use that moment again to now put Ted into the dirt. But Ted is too wise for him. And so when he's doing a little practice to try and make him think, oh, yeah, I'm not very good at dance. That's when he then switches up after the bet's made. He goes, oh, yeah, I'm left-handed. And it, of course, leads to one of the best little speeches in this show. You know, Rupert, guys have underestimated me my entire life. And for years, I never understood why. It used to really bother me. But then one day, I was driving my little boy to school, and I saw this quote by Walt Whitman who was painted on the wall there. It said, be curious, not judgmental. I like that. So I get back in my car and I'm driving to work and all of a sudden it hits me. All them fellas that used to belittle me, not a single one of them were curious. You know, they thought they had everything all figured out and so they judged 
everything, and they judged every one. And I realized that they're underestimating me. <sighs> Who I was had nothing to do with it. Because <laughs> if they were curious, they would ask questions. You know? Questions like, have you played a lot of darts, Ted? <laughs> to which I would have answered, yes, sir. Every Sunday afternoon at a sports bar with my father from age 10 till I was 16 when he passed away. Barbecue sauce. That entire scene is just enables Ted and Rebecca to move their relationship to the next level. Because it already happened in the last episode. When, when Ted was having the panic attack, it was Rebecca who went out to him and made sure that he was okay. Which, three, four, five episodes ago, you would never have predicted that would have happened. So that's taken them up another level in their relationship. And now Ted has kind of re repaid the favour in a way. And that's made their relationship even more great. And it's fantastic. Because then Ted goes the next day, instead of doing his usual biscuits with the boss... Well, I mean, technically he does do the big skits with the boss because he gives them to Higgins. But he goes down and gets his players to spell out high boss on the pitch. I mean, just what a wonderful heartfelt moment. It's just brilliant. And then it's brought back down to earth again. Ugh. But it leads to, in my opinion, the best moment of communication in this entire episode. Because... Rebecca is just so elated. And she sits down there and you think it's going to be nice. Then Higgins tells Rebecca that they've not sold 10,000 tickets for the final match of the season, which is at home against Manchester City. When Rebecca says release them to the visitors, that will mean that at a home game where the majority of the fans should be supporting your team, actually would mean that Manchester City would probably have at least almost equal numbers, if not more, than Richmond. And considering their fight in relegation is a massive deal. And Higgins has been put down on and berated at every opportunity by Rebecca throughout this entire series. He was made to feel really bad about the fact that he helped unite the team with the whole bonfire thing, you know, a couple of episodes ago. So his punishment for that was to not go on the trip to Liverpool, you know, where Rebecca said to him, you, you're going to stay home this weekend and do work that's not employment. Higgins sees every positive thing that Ted is doing and just finally snaps. Oh, you know, fuck off! Excuse me. I'm sick of it. You won't take away your pain by constantly punishing Rupert. Where were these morals when you were having lunches with me so Rupert could have sex in our house? I thought we were friends. You had every opportunity to do the right thing and you never did. But, Pussy. You're right. I, I deserve to carry that around. Um, I do. I should have been braver. And um, I'm sorry for that. I, I'm saying this to you now. Stop it. Or what? I quit. Oh, I know how this goes. You'll come back, grovel for your job, and I'll take you back. But I will make your life just that little bit worse. I love that moment for Higgins. It is one of my most joyous moments of this entire scene. I remember when I first saw that, I stood up and I cheered. I was clapping along. I was like, yes, Higgins! Yes! Finally, you're standing up for yourself. And I loved that moment. And even when he quits, you know, Rebecca still tries to put him down. You know, and say, you're going to come crawling back to me. It's just, and I'm, and it's, and she says, I'm gonna make your life even worse. And Higgins just still walks out of the door. Such a 
powerful moment. I love Higgins for that. So yeah, a lot of people need to learn how to communicate better. Some people need to communicate more. Some people need to communicate less. I probably need to probably stop talking quite so much. What did you think of Season 1, Episode 8, The Diamond Dogs? Drop a comment down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. I've got so many videos coming up. If you missed them, I've done uh, a review this week on Monday of the new Ant-Man movie. So do please go back and check that out. Please do go back and watch the review, my Doctor Who review that came out yesterday, which is, of course, about the Impossible Planet and the Satan Pit two-parter, one of my favourite episodes of Doctor Who. Please do join me on Sunday. I'm doing uh, Hogwarts Legacy streams. You know, that game has recently come out as well. So there's so much going on in the channel. I love that you're on this journey with me. Do please subscribe to the channel and join me for more videos. But for now, my name is Kevin. I am a geek, and you have been watching Kevin the Geek. Goodbye.